Shalom, shalom, dear listeners. My name is Chris Ndekomana, and you're listening to the Kanguka Broadcast. Today is Monday, and I would like to remind all our new listeners that Kanguka is a Kirundi word, the language of Burundi, and it means wake up. The broadcast is available every weekday at 4 a.m. on the Kanguka website, kanguka.com, or the Kanguka mobile app. You can download the mobile app from Google's Play Store or the App Store. Just type Kanguka. That's K A N G U K A. Greetings to all the people who pray for Kanguka. If you are blessed by this ministry, I urge you to lift up in prayer the Kanguka team and anyone who plays a part in this ministry. The Kanguka team isn't limited to those who work in our office. There are many people who contribute in one way or another to the success of this ministry. Some are with us, others are in different places, but I ask you to pray for the whole team and also pray for those who support Kanguka. Our partners who support this ministry also need your prayers. We pray for them every day, but we ask you to join us in praying for them so that God's work through this ministry will continue to grow and we can continue to advance the kingdom of God here on earth. Everything we do here in Kanguka is for the glory of I am. I remind you that I am is the name of God as recorded in Exodus chapter 3 verse 14. As usual on Mondays, in this first part of the broadcast, I talk about the guiding principles of Kanguka. The first principle is to accept the will of God even if it's different from our own will. The second is to pray every day. And the third is forbidden to complain. Instead, we must give thanks in everything. Today I'm going to speak on the first principle which is to accept the will of God even if it's different from our own will. Many people find hard to accept the will of God when it's different from their own will. That's because all the people have desires in their hearts, they see things differently, they have their own goals. So when you don't get what you want, you start accusing I am. You may not say it aloud, but in your heart, you start asking him, how did this happen? How can you let this happen? How come you didn't answer even though I fasted and prayed? I prayed with faith and I stayed away from sin. Why don't you listen? Why are these people against me? So you start questioning God and demanding answers from I am as if he owes you an explanation. You acting like an advisor to God and you telling him what he should do because you think he made a mistake. I want to share with you a word from Romans chapter 11 verse 34 to 35. Let me tell you that these verses opened my eyes about accepting the will of I am, whether I like it or not. Verse 34 says, For who has known the mind of the Lord, or who has become his counselor? You probably know that country leaders or CEOs of companies usually have advisors. An advisor or a counselor is someone who provides advice to you so you can make good decisions. It's usually a person with a lot of experience, a subject matter expert who can point mistakes to you. So here the psalmist is asking who has become the counselor of I am. Is there such a person? In order to be a counselor, you need to be more knowledgeable than the person you're counseling. That way you can detect and correct the errors the person makes. But I am knows everything. He can't make any mistake and he doesn't need any counselor. That's why we shouldn't try to give him advice. Instead, we need to understand what he's doing. When people don't want to accept the will of God, they often act as if they are advisors to God. When you start questioning God, it's the same as if you were telling him that he should have done this or that. That's why we need to accept his will whether we understand it or not. Verse 35 is also very important. It says, Or who has first given to him and it shall be repaid to him. Sometimes we ask God for something as if he owes that thing to us. It's as if we gave it to him first and we're claiming it back. Let me tell you loud and clear that I am doesn't owe you anything. You need to be grateful for whatever he gives you. You should also thank him for the things he didn't give you, even if you don't understand why. You need to trust that he has a good reason for not giving those things to you, because everything I am does is good. So let's learn to give thanks in everything. Let's learn to humble ourselves and to lift our God higher. Let's give him glory.
we continuing our teaching on the book of Acts. This teaching started on the 20th of April. Those who are new to the program can go to the archives to catch up on what we've already covered. I want to let you know that this book has a big impact in the life of a Christian. All the books of the Bible are important. But the book of Acts is very special because it illustrates the life of the early Christians after the ascension of Jesus and the coming of the Holy Spirit on the day of Pentecost. We read in the second chapter about the day of Pentecost when they were filled with the Holy Spirit and they started to be led by the Holy Spirit. This is a major difference with the Old Testament. In the Old Testament, the people were led by the words of the prophets. God spoke through the prophets, but in the New Testament, He operates through the Holy Spirit. We are led by the Holy Spirit. In Romans chapter 8 verse 14, we're told that the sons of God are led by the Holy Spirit. The name of this book is the Act of the Apostles, and it's filled with accounts of the wonderful things the apostles did. But in truth, it's the Holy Spirit that was doing those things through the apostles. That's why I feel that this book should be called the book of Acts of the Holy Spirit. You need to understand that once you're filled with the Holy Spirit, you must be led by Him in everything you do. As I said before, this book is full of valuable teachings and I will be spending a lot of time covering it. I told you in the beginning of this teaching that the book of Acts was written by Luke. Luke was very detailed in his account. That's why we can learn a lot from his books. There are a lot of subjects to cover in this book and we won't be able to go over everything, but I will take time to teach you about very important topics we need to know. Last week we saw in chapter 4 how a multitude of people were following Peter and John because of the miracle they performed. As a result of the healing of the lame man in chapter 3, we saw that about 5,000 people were saved. They accepted Jesus as their Lord and Savior because of one miracle. This shows that when I am performs a miracle, it's because he wants to bring his children to himself through repentance. Last Friday, I was telling you that people didn't believe him because of their modest origin. But God was with them, and because of the presence of that lame man who was now walking and was following them, their opponents had nothing to say, and many were convinced that they were men of God because they spoke with assurance. The temple leaders, including the high priest, attempted to stop them by putting them in jail and threatening them, but they failed. If you read from verse 17 to 19, you will see that once they failed to punish them, they forbid them to speak in the name of Jesus. Can you imagine? They wanted these spirit-filled men to stop proclaiming the name of Jesus. They wanted them to say whatever they wanted but not mention the name of Jesus. That was impossible. Apostles couldn't stop talking about Jesus. They would rather die than stop talking about Jesus. In John 14 verse 6, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. It was therefore impossible for Peter and John not to talk about Jesus. This is why in chapter 4 verse 19, the same Peter who was fearful and denied Jesus, he was now speaking with boldness because he was filled with the Holy Spirit. So in verse 19, Peter and John answered them by asking them whether it is right in the sight of God to listen to them more than to God. They asked them to judge. This is a very important statement. Peter and John were saying that between obeying them and obeying God, the choice is clear. They needed to be obedient to God and proclaim the name of the Lord. It's true we need to respect leadership and it's mentioned in the word of God. But let me tell you that if your boss at work is asking you to not read the Bible and talk about Jesus, yes, you have to accomplish your task at work, but when it comes to your personal life, your relationship with Jesus is in anyone's business but your own. We need to obey God first. Nobody should stop you from following and calling on the name of Jesus. No one should forbid you to testify about the name of Jesus even if it's your boss. You have to choose who you're going to serve, Jesus or your boss. I will explain more on this tomorrow. We need to be fearless as the apostles were. May I am bless you. Have a wonderful day. If you want to talk to a man of God or you need a particular prayer, you can call us on plus 256 78 13 337.